Hey guys, in this video, I'll be going over the lovely subject of the IRS withholding estimator tool online. This is a great tool to use to report accurate figures on our IRS form W-4, which tells our employer how much taxes to withhold out of our paychecks. Obviously super important as you wanna make sure you don't have any unwanted surprises at the end of the year with Mr. Taxman. Stay tuned. All right, some things to mention before we get started. This withholding estimator tool is only as good as the numbers you give it. It is prone to user error. So if you give it some wrong numbers, it's gonna spit out a wrong figure at the end. Keep that in mind. I know, what a shocker. Government tools are not easy to use. I'm here to help at least somewhat understand how to fill this thing out. Some things you'll need to complete this estimator tool. Your most recent pay stub and or stubs if there's a couple jobs in the household. An estimate of all other income you might have for the year, including like capital gains, dividends, interest, retirement, self-employment, yada, yada, anything, any other types of income. Uh, the estimator tool will account for that. And your most recent tax return. All right, now that we got everything, we're ready to go. So I'll include a link in the description to this website here, but this is where it starts, okay? Before you begin, this is the stuff I just went over. Some of this stuff we'll go over here in a second. Let's get going, click that button there. Start with the basics, filing status. What is your filing status? So these first three are pretty self-explanatory. Single, you're not married. Uh, married filing jointly with your spouse or married filing separate from your spouse. Had a household is usually the one that uh, there is a lot of question over. People say they are head of household when truly by the IRS standards, they're not. Uh, qualifying widower, generally, if you're in this situation, you know if you're a uh, qualifying widower. Uh, nonetheless, uh, for these two, if you click this little nifty question mark button here, Look at that, it tells us about the head of household and the qualifying widower. Head of household, something to know right here, look at that. You are unmarried, you're not married for head of household and you pay more than 50% of the living expenses, I would say, for your, defend, your dependent and yourself. That's what that's saying right there, okay? So in our example, we're gonna do married filing jointly though. May another taxpayer claim you as a dependent? If you're married, no one's claiming you as a dependent. Potentially, if you're single, that's really it, okay? Uh, so we'll say no, that's most common. Do you plan to claim dependence on your return? We'll say, yeah, we got two kids here. So we'll put two on there. How many, two? Okay, some income. Do you or your spouse hold a job this year with paychecks with federal income tax really held? Yes. How many jobs? We'll say one. How many jobs is your spouse? We'll say my spouse has one too. Will you or your spouse receive income from a pension? No, we're working, we are not retired, we don't get a pension, we just have jobs here, okay? Um, other income, so as described earlier, if you have any of these sources of income, you're gonna check the box. So security, unemployment, self-employment, dividends, interest, la, 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 all these. I'll say I got a side gig, I do Uber. Uber is self-employment, we'll put that right there, okay? Um, I am not over 65, neither is my spouse, I'm not blind, and neither is my spouse. Okay, income and holding, this is the tough part here. Uh, do you expect to hold this job the entire year? I'll say yes, I do. So if we say no, like let's say we started this job this year, then we would just put the start date and the, and the end date for that job. But uh, for this case, we'll say yes, we do have the job all year, so does my spouse. Uh, how frequently are we paid? I'm gonna put once a month. On what date was your last pay stub? We'll say it was the 30th of June. Once a month, there we go. Enter the total wages you expect to receive this year. If you click this little nifty question mark, it's gonna tell us that you include the gross pre-wages, pre, sorry, pre-tax wages, salary and tips you expect to receive a compensation for your job, 
uh, before any contributions to 401k or insurance premium or before any deductions is really what it is. So what do you think you're going to get gross out of your paycheck? And let's do, we'll say 60,000. Uh, enter any bonuses. That's pretty straightforward right there. You put those in your, if you've already got some this year or expect to receive any later in the year. My employer will withhold the appropriate taxes. So you can check the box there if your employer has like a set amount that they're gonna be withholding out of your bonus uh, paycheck. So here we go. Using your last pay statement, enter all federal income taxes withheld. Let's take a look at a pay statement here. Okay, here's one, right? That pay statement, that's the one we just entered in there. What's our federal income tax? Current, there it is, 648.31. Let's enter that in there. Year to date, sorry, per pay period was 648.31, the one I just read off. And year to date, there it is, year to date, uh, 5804.81, 5804.81. Did you or will you contribute to a tax deferred retirement plan such as a 401k? I'm gonna say no on this one. Or an HSA, FSA, You'll know what these are if you have them, but I'll say no on this. Um, let's take a look at the spouse. How frequently is your spouse paid? I'll say same thing, once a month. And this is the same date here. We're gonna use the same exact pay stub here, okay? Um, total wages, we're gonna say 60,000. Enter bonuses, we don't get any bonuses year to date. We've withheld 58.04.81, 58.04.81, and per pay period we have 648.31. No and no. Other source of income, net self-employment income. So we're gonna read this. This is, this is the amount of income, let's see here, minus deductible expenses. So if we're doing Uber, they're, let's see here, they provide a 1099 at the end of the year. On their statements, they're gonna have like uh, gross uh, amounts paid. They're gonna have all their fees. So we would deduct those fees out of there, as well as we're gonna deduct all the mileage we're gonna claim on the tax return as well. So we kind of have to do like a mock, what we call P&L, uh, profit or loss with the income minus the expenses. Um, and it's about like 56-ish cents a mile that we get. Um, and then what is that net after everything? We're gonna put that amount in here. I'm gonna say we'll get, let's say 5,000 off this, not much. Estimated federal income tax, you paid towards self-employment income. I'll say I haven't paid anything, okay? Next, adjustments to income. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at it, see what the adjustments are. So let's see here, self-employed health insurance deduction. If you're self-employed and you're paying health insurance, we can get a deduction there. This is Schedule C sole proprietors only. Um, let's see, contributions to SEP. These are our individual retirement uh, plans. Student loan interest deduction. If you're paying into that, be, uh, be sure to put that in there. There is limitations here. And uh, let's see here, that topic, we'll talk about that. But basically, if you make over a certain amount of income, you can't get the student loan interest deduction. Educator expense, if you're a teacher, you get about like 25 bucks. Uh, deductions for IRA, there's a limit to that, but you can do IRA, HSA, moving expense, alimony paid. There you go, okay? We're gonna say we don't have any of these adjustments. Go to next. So this is the itemized deduction or the standard deduction. So most people, I would say probably eight or nine times out of 10, they're gonna take the standard deduction, but some people do use the itemized and people that are using the itemized are generally homeowners with a big mortgage interest deduction and or people that give a lot to charity. So if we take a look at this, what I would do here if I were you and you do itemize, I would take a look at your 2020 tax return to see what you put there for itemized deductions here on Schedule A. So if we if we look at 2020, 1040, Schedule A, right? I would just put in these numbers here, right? So you put medical dental expense, that lines up right here, medical dental, and we're doing this column here. Taxes you paid qualified interest that you paid, right? That would be that line there. 
gifts to charity. I mean, unless something changes, obviously for 2021, you would change something in here, but that's what I would do if I were you, okay? In our case, I'm gonna use the standard deduction. Credits, let's see what credits. Get my results, no, you wanna see what credits we can use. So try. So I put that we have two kids here, um, and I'm gonna put that they are both under 17 years old. Give us a bigger credit. Child dependent care credit, uh, we pay for both of them to, go to daycare, enter the estimate of work-related child and dependent care expenses. Let's say we pay about 10,000 a year for that. That's what this is gonna say, no more than three per kid. But let's say if we put 10, that's okay. This tool will adjust for that. Earned income credit, we make more than the earned income credit amount. This will adjust, or sorry, this will help you calculate if you get the earned income tax credit. Basically, earned income tax rate is for low income. Uh, I put basically 120, almost 170,000 of income. That would exceed the earned income tax credit limit. Adoption credit, we're not gonna do that. Foreign tax credit for paying taxes to other uh, countries. Educational, uh, that would be if we're going to uh, university. Retirement savings if you're low income and you are putting towards a retirement. The homeowners, so like there's certain, let's see here, energy efficiency credits that we get for windows, doors, insulation, roofs, those sorts of things. These little nifty question marks will kind of help you out with that though, okay? Uh, I'm gonna say we don't have any of these energy efficiency uh, vehicles. These are pretty awesome. These are for like electric or hybrid vehicles that qualify. Um, I know Tesla does not qualify any more for these, but there are, there's like a list of them out there uh, and you can look those up. But I'll say basically all we're getting is the, this is this is super common right here, okay? Hit next, your results, look at that. With what we're getting, what we're doing right now, we're gonna expect to get a refund of about $10,000. Again, with everything I inputted in there, basically those two pay stubs that I did uh, put in there, we're gonna get a 10,000 and the, and the two kids we have um, and then the uh, standard deduction that I got in there, okay? Uh, that's what we're gonna get. So what I, the cool thing about this tool is this thing right here. You can kind of be like, okay, well, if I keep things the, the same as right now, at the end of the year, I'm gonna get like a $10,000 refund. But maybe I'm in a situation like, wait, why do I wanna end up at the end of the year to get that $10,000? Can I get that throughout the year on my paychecks instead? Yes, you can by adjusting this thing, okay? So if I were to adjust this, right, and I'm like, oh, I don't want any refund. I want zero refund. Uh, based on you, the results are not achievable at this moment. I've already paid in too much. Let's see here, where will it change? Okay, look at that. 3,000, so with a $3,300 refund, I'll do this. These steps right here is what I'll have to do on the W-4. Or you click this guy and it'll produce a W-4 for you. I would hit, I would put my info in right here. I put married filing jointly. And look at that. They already filled this thing out. Okay, I sign this, send it off to my employer. That's for me and then for my spouse. Let's see how, how to adjust withholding for the spouse, right? Same thing, you click this little button. Boom, produces a W-4. I put married filing jointly because that's what I put in the tool. And they make a little adjustment right there. Look at that. Sign this, send it off to your employer. So this is the really cool thing about this uh, tax withholding estimator tool is that you can adjust it. One thing to keep in mind though, we're halfway through the year. If we go to make adjustments, right, with a $3,300 refund here, Let's say next year, we don't make any adjustments moving forward. That's gonna throw things out of whack because we've already had a, a half a year paying into taxes, like paying too much into taxes. And now we're kind of making up for that for the next half of the year by filing these new W-4s. But again, if we keep those W-4s the same moving forward, that can change things, okay? All right, one thing I do wanna point out is there's this really cool website here, paychecksity.com. I use this thing all the time for clients to make sure that we are getting accurate withholding numbers moving forward. But if like, okay, we spit out this 
this W-4 and I give it to my employer. And I'm like, okay, what is this going to do to my paycheck? You can find that out before actually your employer actually runs your paycheck. You go on here and you do that, right? One thing I would make sure you do is you click this use 2020 W-4 little box there and then fill this out. So let's say we were to fill it out with the one I got here, marry jointly. And the only thing they have on here is this line three claim dependents, right? So that's all I would do here. Um, well, first, sorry, I'd have to put the amounts that I'm getting paid. And so it'll have that gross pay in there per pay period. I'm on a monthly year to date. I'd have to fill that out too. Married is our filing status. And then that three, right, which is $33.99 is what I'd have to put in there, right? And then everything else comes from the paycheck. All right, again, this is a great tool to use to see exactly what the W-4 is going to do to your paycheck. This is what I'm always using when people ask me to change their W-2s to make sure moving forward for the year that we're going to end up in some type of situation, whatever they would like to see on the tax return. I'm also normally checking this against like what a tax planner on my tax software is showing me too based on the numbers to try and get a very accurate number. Again, keep in mind the name of this tool. It is an estimator. They do the best they can. I know it sucks. I wish there was just a flat tax. It was easy as possible. It's 10% on everything is 10% is 10%. But unfortunately, the world we live in here is not that easy. There's deductions, there's credits, there's different types of incomes that are taxed differently. The filing status gets the different tax brackets, la, 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 all these different variables. And that's why we use this tool, okay? Again, it's an estimator. It will get a very accurate number so long that you input the correct numbers and you're not forgetting anything. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. As usual, like, share, subscribe, throw something in the comments. Maybe I left something out. Let me know. I'm here to help you guys out. Thanks so much for watching.